And uh, first of all, would like to say that um, we are very much looking forward to uh, receiving some very good and innovative expression of interest for um, then making together with the FPA consortium a really good and uh, innovative project in uh, this field because there is a very big need in, the, in this field uh, to really be able to uh, produce some uh, new models and tools that can be used and be really uh, uh, designed and fought for specifically for trying to get new medicine to needy patient population. And uh, this is something that also, um, of course, we are talking about European research, but it's clear that this goes well far beyond Europe. So this is indeed uh, very important. So uh, just to remind everybody, this session is going to be video recorded. So please, uh, every time that you also uh, ask a question, kindly uh, speak in the microphone. And uh, again, if you have, uh, this is really supposed to be a session that is specifically to uh, interact with the topic writer on the scientific really basis of this project and what really we would like, what is the vision behind uh, this project. So if you have general question about application procedure rules, uh, um, you will still have the possibility to see all the section from the morning on uh, the IMI uh, website. And uh, also um, they will be put there immediately after the end of this uh, info day. And also more information you can get from the information booths that are still open throughout the afternoon. And then uh, you can also find more information on our website or you can also simply contact us either by email or uh, by phoning us. So um, the topic presenter is uh, Martin Parr from G GSK. And just to give him a very brief introduction on uh, Martin, Martin is a, is a doctor, has been trained as a physician and then uh, become a specialist. And um, he then moved to industry in 2004 and worked in early clinical development in neurodegeneration. And uh, then moved also to neglected diseases, working on malaria and tuberculosis, and he worked in Denmark, in UK, and in Spain. Currently, Martin is in charge of tuberculosis project in GlaxoSmithKline, working from candidate selection to proof of concept, with special interest in the translational side of the disease. And uh, uh, the presentation of Martin will be rec uh, now recorded and uh, will be available on the IMI website. And uh, on addition, is we are going to have a webinar uh, where Martin again will make the same presentation and this will be organized for the 27th of October at 10.30 a.m. and will last probably for one and a half hour. And uh, with the, you will find the instruction how to participate with the webinar on our website and how to uh, register for that. And uh, in, this present in this webinar, you will be able to listen again to the presentation and also to ask questions using a, a chat function. So this please also to, for colleagues that uh, could not uh, participate, if we would very appreciate if you spread the news. Okay, then just uh, a few uh, little points. Some are really more uh, practical when you will be uh, hopefully deciding that you want to prepare an expression of interest for uh, applying in this topic. Please uh, uh, remember that there are some general things that you have to remember. That is, uh, first of all, for IMI really to be find your application eligible and send it for evaluation is very important that you really read carefully the template that is uh, included in the um, instruction for participation and uh, that you address all the points that are in this template. So the scientific technological case, the partnership case, the summary work plan, and the ethical issue. So please fill and try to uh, complete all this section because this is uh, uh, something that is important because if you don't complete one of these sections, you will be found automatically not eligible to go for evaluation. So this is just really a technical first barrier that just please be careful about that. Then the last uh, important technical uh, 
uh, thing is that uh, there is uh, an online tool that you use for doing your submission and uh, you submit your expression of interest, you save it, but uh, then there is a little, little uh, button that you have to click on that says finalize. If you don't click that button, your submission is not finalized and we can't read it. So please remember that even if you can reopen your application because you forget something and you save it again, at the end you have to finalize. If you don't finalize, it's like a non-submission. So please be careful about that. Okay, from after this uh, little bit boring but necessary um, practical uh, tips, uh, let's move towards more towards the science. So, so um, you should have all in uh, your folder a copy of the topic. Please read it very carefully. Every word is important. And especially read very carefully the scientific objective because all of them need to be addressed to get really a top application. And uh, in, uh, you will see that there is also some information about uh, possible uh, work packages. And uh, these are um, they say that the idea of how the topic writers see that uh, you might deliver the objective and the deliverable of the project. But uh, this structure has to be considered in a flexible way. And so if you have uh, some other innovative design where you think you can better address the objective of the project, you are very welcome to uh, suggest that. But uh, remember also that uh, the participant, that is you, your applicant, are expected to make key contribution on the deliverable that are defined already in the, in the topic, and that this will occur in synergy with the FPA consortium. And you will see that there is already defined in, uh, in the topic what is the FPA contribution, which is an in-kind contribution, and uh, this uh, contribution is already in, uh, in general defined in the topic, but it will be still refined once uh, the um, winner consortium will be um, selected by external uh, experts, and uh, uh, the FPA and this consortium will have to join forces to write a full project proposal. Okay, and then uh, here you have more contact detail. So just to stress that if you have any question, please uh, um, contact me or the IMI office because the um, FPA consortium at the moment is in a frozen state, so they are not allowed to interact with any possible uh, applicant. And, uh, and also remember that we have a partner search tool that uh, you can uh, find on our website if you want to find uh, any new partners. And now I leave the word to Martin. So thank you for coming. Uh, I will stay frozen here for the rest of the hour and a half. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming to Brussels and taking the, the time to, to come and listen to us. I know it's been a, a very short notice. I would like first to introduce, uh, well, myself, Martin Pang, uh, FPA coordinator. I work in GlaxoSmithKline, but I have several colleagues here who also have made a, uh, the effort not to, to, to have the time to, to come here to Brussels uh, from GlaxoSmithKline. I have Ini Wangulo in vivo biology. If you could stand up and say hello. <laughs> Santiago Ferrer, uh, D, DMPK. They both uh, helped me. Uh, they are the fathers of the creature. And then from Sanofia Bentis, uh, I have two members, the head of the TB uh, unit, uh, Sophie Lagrange, and Annabelle Mila. Uh, she's the deputy coordinator. So uh, we all uh, try to address your, your questions. I, I think we are here to, to discuss, to clarify any, any questions you might have and, and, and uh, facilitate the expressions of interest, the ultimate goal is, is fulfill those objectives and be successful in removing this bottleneck we believe we have in, in the TB R&D process. So as uh, we want to convey a very clear message. So the, the, um, there is a need for uh, public-private uh, collaboration Tuberculosis research is, uh, in our opinion, a paradigm for this. Uh, uh, we are already operating under a public-private partnership in, in GSK and several of the FPA companies with TB Alliance. 
So it's, it's a clear example of that. TB is a major global threat, as you all know, is a poverty-related disease, is a public health emergency, uh, is, is a problem with a global dimension, and is being a neglected area in, in drug development. Uh, so it needs uh, a lot of attention, a lot of resources. Uh, the disease burden represents a major scientific challenge. This is itself is, is quite more difficult than other bacterial infections, and we don't know that much about the biology, and that's another uh, bottleneck we have. So no single organization can be successful on, on achieving this, this objective. So that's why also we believe this uh, framework of IMI uh, can help us on a joint collaborative uh, partnership uh, to remove the bottleneck. So the full, the overall objective uh, you have it there is to define an integrated set of criteria for the assessment of drug properties in preclinical in vitro and in vivo models that will improve the design of early clinical studies, phase one proof of concept in TB patients. So what we want to do is integrate the several models that we already have and maybe getting new models there and enabling technologies like imaging or biomarkers, translation biomarkers, from preclinical, and integrate all these on doing a more efficient and successful uh, translation to the clinic, and ultimately even uh, improving how we design experimental medicine trials in proof of concept for efficacy. So I think it's evident for everybody that uh, uh, the complexity, the cost, the duration of the experiments escalates as you go further in development, in the development process. So, for example, here you see that in late preclinical, we are in the orders of hundreds of thousands of millions of euros. And uh, as, as you go further in phase one, phase two, first time in human can be one million, then you escalate in phase two to tens of millions, and in phase three, hundreds of millions. So the more you delay in answering certain critical questions, the worse it will be uh, for the attrition. So we believe that by investing heavily in late preclinical with this translational vision, that will pay out at the end in less cost and um, more success, more probability of success, and less duration for being successful in achieving new drug regimens for TB. So I, I'm showing here the, the objective again is to define this integrated set of preclinical tools. So we want to get all data we have already or redesign uh, studies uh, in a way to integrate them properly with in vitro models, ex vivo models, in vivo models, in silico models even, and develop new innovative uh, PKPD modeling uh, in order to optimize the design of the early clinical studies. So again, as I said before, uh, tuberculosis is a paradigm of pre-competitive research and uh, public-private partnership because of the magnitude of the problem. We don't believe any of the companies uh, currently working in this disease can achieve uh, successfully to remove this bottleneck. We need the innovation of the industry. Uh, industry usually is, uh, I mean, it doesn't fall into the priorities of industry to focus on methodology development, uh, and we believe uh, academics can come with strong knowledge, uh, basic science, and help on achieving this, this objective. Also, industry, a consortium of industry is, is a must uh, if we want to innovate in how we get new combinations of drugs. We will have to have different companies there providing their compounds. So, I don't want to forget the critical things uh, because this is one of the most important slides that we expect from the applicants. We don't want to be prescriptive, it's, it's, it's just to convey the message, what we're expecting from you. 